Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm just gonna do a quick bloom profile of the orchids I have in bloom. Um, this is my Psychopsis Mendenhall Hildos. Uh, this one is a sequential bloomer and this is the second time uh, it's bloomed. The first time it bloomed was when I wasn't even around. I was out traveling and uh, my mom was taking care of my orchids. Um, it's funny, I had this plant for almost two years and the whole two years I have it doesn't send out new suitables, it doesn't send out a flower spike, but as soon as I leave, sure enough, um, it puts out two new suitables. It sent out this one and it sent out this one. And then it sent out this flower spike while I was away and my mom sent me pictures of it as it was developing and growing. And this is almost a three foot long flower spike. Um, yeah, these guys, these, these are awesome. They kind of just go on forever. And then at the very end, you get this really cool display and it's got another bud back here. So as soon as this one, this bloom falls, the bud behind it will develop and, and bloom out in flower. So nice thing about this orchid is it's, once it has a spike, it's almost always in bloom. Um, there's a brief two, three days, maybe even a week if it's cooler. Um, when the while the buds developing that it'll take it to, to open up and, and bloom but um, I don't know if you can see this in here it's got these little fuzzies right here on the column I think that's really neat and people call this a samurai orchid or things like that but um, yeah this is my psychopsis all right and next up is my Gertonia or my CTNA why not this little Catalea type um, is one of my most reliable bloomers and one of my most vigorous growers um, besides my Phalaenopsis types. Um, this guy, um, I think these have the capability of putting out multiple blooms on multiple flower spikes. I believe they're free blooming throughout the year. Um, every time they send up a new growth, it'll bloom. There's no uh, guaranteed season or no specified season, but I just love the blooms on this guy. He's got these really deep pinkish red blooms with a really bright yellow center right there on the lip near the column. Um, and when I was talking about free blooming, these guys will send up new growths anytime. There's no rhyme or reason to how they grow or there's no specified season when they're in vegetative growth or blooming. Uh, they just kind of just do what they want to do. That's what's really nice about these complex hybrids. This was the previous growth. Um, you can see it never really matured. When these mature, they get the two really big leaves and a really nice big uh, pseudobulb. And this guy, he just kind of stopped growing. I think what happened was, is when I did move down, it changed. Um, my grow method changed. The habitat or the environment that they, uh, my orchids were in went from almost no humidity at all to um, a decent amount of humidity. Right now in my grow room, it's first thing in the morning, it's 7.30, or that's an hour off, I didn't change that. It's 7.49 actually. 66 degrees and 43% humidity. So the, uh, they're getting a lot more humidity than they, down here than they were um, up at my parents' house. Up at my parents, they were getting around 20%, sometimes even less just because Montana is so dry and my parents they don't like humidity, so they really don't like having humidifiers on. But anyways, when I went from that drier, colder environment, um, this also had the thrips. You can see the damage here for when this got attacked by thrips, all that scarring on the, the leaf right there and wrinkling. That's from thrips damage. But I think this growth just gave up. And right down here at the base of the rhizome, it sent out these two really big really healthy growths. Um, I really hope these both flower. Um, you can see they've got really nice growth and this last suitable, even though it was immature, it sent out this really expansive root system and there's even some moss growing on down there. But this is my CTNI, CTNA, why not, or Gertonia. I think everything is just getting reclassified to just straight up Catalea now, but anyways. These are his blooms. They're not fragrant. They're just small, compact. And um, this guy, he's only gonna have three blooms, but I believe these can get up to 10 blooms per flower spike. So I'm really excited to see that.
All right, and next up is my Foul Pinlong Charisse. Um, this guy has really soft pink, almost white blooms with a pink overcast to them. A little speckled lip with a little yellow in there, but the fragrance on this is like roses. Um, this is one of my favorites that, um, when I first found it, I was in Hawaii, and the one, but the particular variety I found in Hawaii, this has mottled leaves, but they're kind of thin and papery. The one that I found in Hawaii had really thick, um, almost succulent-like leaves that were really round, kind of like this. Um, but again, this one is pretty, pretty paper thin. Um, the one that I found in Hawaii was really, really thick. It was almost like my, my Stuarty on it. This has really thick, waxy, succulent-like leaves, heavily mottled, and it's got big, rounded shaped leaves. And this guy's also on Spike, but he'll be in a different um, bloom profile video. Anyway, um, again, like I said, this is one of my favorites. Um, I had to film him later, and he already dropped the blooms on this flower spike, but um, I had to wait till I had some more plants in bloom before I did an extensive bloom profile. And this isn't even that extensive. I'm only going to have five, six plants that are actually in bloom, but you can see he's getting bigger. Um, this was the previous leaf, this was the newest leaf. So he's he's getting a lot bigger and hopefully um, once these blooms drop, he'll start going back into vegetative growth again. But again, the fragrance on this is absolutely amazing. Um, I'll just be sitting on the couch and this will be on my kitchen table where I have it right now. And it'll, I'll be able to smell it when I'm just sitting on the couch watching TV all the way in the living room. Um, so again, this is one of my favorites for the fragrance. Um, it's also a Phalaenopsis, so it's really easy to grow. And it's got these really nice, lightly modeled, modeled leaves. Um, some of them can have a lot heavier modeling. Some of them can be lighter to almost no modeling. As you can see, this leaf right here, it didn't have any modeling until the very tip right here. And I, I bet you that's a, an indication of how much light it was getting. Um, this probably bloomed uh, near the end of summer, so this leaf started to grow midsummer, and when it finally grew out and matured, it was getting a lot less light later on into fall, and that's when it grew out these flower spikes. So, this is my foul pinlong Sharice. And next up is my Phalaenopsis Equestris 3 lip. This guy I had a special order from Poland. There's a grower that I found over there who is willing to ship to the United, to the United States. Um, this guy is kind of a, a free spirit. He'll bloom, he'll grow vegetatively. Um, I had another one of these from Norman's Orchids, but it wasn't the three lip variety. It was just the Montclair Peloric. And the, the petals didn't mimic the lip perfectly like these ones do. Um, the petals, they were just kind of a triangular shape and were the same color as the very tip right here. See how it's kind of a purplish, a purplish color, not so much pink or red, but a really light purple. That's what this, the petals looked like. They didn't have um, the throat there uh, mimicking um, the yellow throat. They just, they're just a straight up pink color. They didn't really have much, uh, many interesting characteristics to it, but it's got this flower spike here and these make, these make really long flower spikes. Um, which have tendencies to produce cakeys. But this guy, he looks rough. Like I said, this is yet another one that went through the uh, the thrips infestation. And these grow really fast. So I just got rid of the thrips almost two months ago. And since the thrips infestation has put out one, two, and it's working on its third leaf. So um, the Phalaenopsis equestris is probably one of the most vigorous growers of the Phalaenopsis variety. And this is the second flower spike that is starting to branch. Um, like I said, these guys, they just kind of do what they want. Um, they don't really have any special season for growth, vegetative growth versus blooming growth. And I just love these flowers. It's not fragrant. Um, I know some equestrists can be, they can have a, some kind of citrusy fragrance to them, very light, lemony. Um, this guy does not. But the reason I love the three lips so much is every single flower is different. There's different markings on them, kind of like a, like a Phalaenopsis magic art would be. Um, they just, 
every flower is different. Some of them have more scalloping. Some of them don't actually have all three petals to the lip that mimic the lip. This flower is fading. Um, but yeah, there's always an extensive amount of buds and they, they open freely. They just kind of don't stop blooming. Um, you can see how long this guy's been in bloom. Started right here, right at the base of this clip and they bloom, 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 bloom. And I would have filmed him sooner, but you know, like I said, those darn thrips, they get a hold of things and they ruin everything. So all this right here, there's thrips damage right there. I, I treated it, they went away, it grew out to here. Then it got thrips again. So you can see each one of these little areas is where the thrips attacked. So I think the reason it branched is because it thought it was gonna abort its growth tip, but I kept treating it and I kept keeping those thrips under, under control. And now that they're completely eradicated, it's got a free growth tip here, a branching spike here. And this guy up here is also in free growth too. So. It's a really small compact plant. Excuse the noise down here. She loves to play in water, but she hates water. I don't understand what her deal is. But it's a really small, small plant. Here's my hand compared to it. Really, really small blooms about the size of my thumb. But this is my Phalaenopsis equestris three lip.